Hi, I'm Evan. I'm a photographer based just north of Los Angeles. And today I want to talk about photography fails. Now, I want to start off by saying that, as you may already know, we're living in a digital age where the internet and social media dictate the narrative of who we choose to present ourselves as to the public. And that includes the negatives that we choose to show. What this tends to do is give people tuning into our lives kind of the impression that mm, this perfection ideal that, right, that we don't have any flaws. And what that tends to do is give people these unrealistic goals that they strive for. And another thing that it does is it also teaches people to perceive the uh, destination and not the journey associated with it. Um, and I think it's an important thing to show people is that the, the journey or, you know, the process is a very important part, if not more important than for our purposes, the final image that you get, right? So, I want to talk specifically about some fails that I've had with photography. And I, I want to talk about learning in photography. Um, I, think, I think there's probably two types of learners in this world. There's people who see something and then they are able to replicate it fairly close to the original. And then there's people who have to apply they have to do the thing that they're learning themselves and they have to mess up in order to learn it and i'm one of those people for me it takes mistake after mistake to learn and improve and it's kind of like there's a quote and i i don't know exactly how it goes but kind of the idea behind it is uh the best winners are the best losers now I'm not ashamed to talk about my photography fails one thing that I will say is if you're being paid to do a job do not make these mistakes let's get into it so I want to talk about a shoot that I did recently for a musician and we were kind of talking about the concept that he was looking to uh, achieve in the photos and he kind of had this aesthetic of like blue and yellow colors and so we agreed on kind of like a blue background and this was a very uh, simplistic concept and for me the way that I operate when I take photos is I like to get creative so usually I'll make sure that the first thing that I do is get the photos that the um, person wants and then I'll get creative and do different things and uh, so long story short I went to get a blue backdrop for this photo shoot and I went to a camera store in LA and I was looking at backdrops and I was like, oh, okay, well, I need a big backdrop because I want to make sure that I get, you know, the, the shoes and the legs and I, I wanted a full body kind of thing. And so the normal backdrops that they had, the, you know, roll away backdrops, they were uh, really small and narrow. And so I kept looking around and I inevitably found a backdrop big enough, but the problem was it was uh, material. I'm trying to think of the name of it. I'll put it above if I remember, it's really simple. But uh, it's a fabric and I had some reservations going into it that 
I would run into some issues, but in my mind, I was like, oh, what, I mean, what else is Photoshop for, right? So, I don't know. I thought it wouldn't be too big of a deal um, to fix whatever issues that I ran into with the backdrop, but set the backdrop up and it had so many creases in it and I've dealt with fabrics before in other photo shoots and what I had to do in the past was get a steamer and steam out all the creases and even then I still had to go into Photoshop and it took so much um, cloning and heel tooling and it, it was still a very involved process so this fabric was much worse and as soon as I put it up I knew oh my god and the worst part about it isn't so much the fact that it was gonna be a long process for me to edit these photos but the biggest problem was that I knew that the client would want to see the photos as I was taking them and I'm these photos did not look good the lighting looked great on him the he looked great in the photos it was just the background was just so bad I tried putting a light on the background to see if it would blow out some creases and kind of you know give a halo effect and it just amplified the creases so Anyway, I kept reassuring him that I'd be able to fix it, and I was able to fix it, but it took a long time <laughs> and a lot of magic in Photoshop. And let me know down below if you're interested in seeing that process, and I'd be more than happy to do a video where I kind of uh, edit and fix my fail so that you all can see it. Um, but anyway, long story short for that one, if you have reservations going into it, figure out a different solution. I could have just bought two of the rollaways and put them together and it would have been much easier to edit out a you know, crease in the middle rather than editing out a bunch of creases and having to do that whole thing. So that's that's probably it's not my most recent fail. I want to talk about another fail that uh, happened to me recently. So I've been getting into film photography quite a bit over the past, uh, I mean, since since COVID happened. And I started with a 35 millimeter camera. And I'll be honest with you, that even just loading that camera for me coming straight from digital, since I was a kid was a challenge and like I told you before I am the type of person who learns by failing and so I shot the whole roll of film and then after watching YouTube videos I was like okay well now how do I get the film out of the camera and this specific camera has a rewind button and none of the reviews really highlighted the fact that you have to press or turn the rewind button before you actually can rewind the film. And so I was just going hard trying to get that film back in. I'm like, why is there so much tension? And it was a lot of tension. And finally at the end, I, I pushed really hard. And I'm like, I don't know about this. And then something snapped off and I just heard a loud snapping noise. And I was like, oh no, I broke the camera. I didn't break the camera, fortunately, but I broke the film off of the spool and it came off. And so I couldn't use that roll at all. So then I, for my second roll of film, loaded that film in wrong. Third roll of film, I underexposed the whole thing. And so it took me four rolls of film on my 35 millimeter camera to even get the process right now it's so easy for me to do it but it took me all of those failures to get it right and then 
After that, I went from 35 millimeter to medium format film and I got the Mamiya RZ67. And when I, I actually was lucky enough, I bought it from a local seller and he was a really nice guy and he showed me every little nuance to the RZ67. And you know, he spent like 45 minutes explaining it all to me. And by the end of it, I was like, okay, I pretty much got this down. This is much easier than the 35 millimeter that I messed up four times. And I shot a couple rolls with that and there was no problem at all. And, and recently I went on a shoot and this shoot was just the biggest fail. And so I had two guys, I styled them and we were going to go to a location and um, so we're driving there and I have my Canon R5, I have my 35 millimeter film camera and I have my 120 millimeter film camera and we get to the destination and I'm like, oh yes, this is perfect. And there's some old vintage cars it's a trail it's a hiking trail but there was some old vintage cars on the street before we got to the trail and i and i had i actually had a strobe on me too to set up with the mamiya and the um and the canon r5 so i was all into it i had the whole idea in my head so i'm like all right guys pose pose in the car and um i was taking some great photos and we got a bunch of photos of the car and then we start walking up the trail and then and I found a nice spot um, near some greenery and we did a couple shots there and then I um, I should start by saying that or I should interrupt by saying that the 35 millimeter camera is a rangefinder and I shot a bunch of those photos without realizing that my cap was still on and I'm pleased if if this has happened to you you'll make me feel a lot better about it but so halfway through that I realized oh no the cap was on so I finished the roll of 35 and then I was like okay now I'm gonna start shooting with my r5 and I pull it out forgot my SD card so that went down the drain. Then I'm like, all right, I guess I just have my RZ67. I had my strobe set up. I was taking some shots, and I was like, oh, man, this is this is amazing. And finally, I get back to the car, and I open up the camera, and I realize, oh, my gosh, I loaded the film in backwards now we're talking about the medium format camera that I had never had a problem loading film with we're talking about the 35 millimeter camera that I had already gone through my trial and error and thought I was in the clear and we're talking about my digital camera and I've never forgotten an SD card before so the moral of the story is for this shoot it, I was on a time crunch and I had to set up the styling on the fly and had to had to do the shoot and be back in an hour and it took you know 20 minutes to drive to the destination so I was just a little bit stressed going into it and I was rushing loading the film and rush leaving uh, the studio and moral of the story is take a breath it's not the end of the world if you have to take the shots quicker but do your due diligence and slow down and make sure you have everything that you need and and all of the assets are put together properly before you take the photos just a couple of recent fails that I had and I felt like I should let you guys know and just hopefully it is a lesson to teach you that it's imperative that you take a take a moment 
to collect yourself and make sure that all your assets are in place before you do a shoot and and if something doesn't feel right if you have reservations about something try a different way planning is everything some of my best shoots I spent weeks and weeks planning and the actual photos took 10 minutes it's all about it's all about being tactful and visualizing pre-visualizing and getting it before you're basically getting the photo before you even take it well i hope this helped you all out today and uh if if you've learned anything at all besides the fact that i have a problem with making mistakes before i learn please let me know uh, down in the comments below if you like this please give it a thumbs up please subscribe uh, look forward to more content from you soon. Thank you.